No man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. We're going to open our Bibles to the book of Psalms, the 74th chapter and I'm going to read from the first verse. I'm going to read quite a number of verses, hopefully to the 11th or the 12th verses of that chapter because I need to get the details to you so I can give some uh, context to the text. Oh God, why do you cast us off forever? The man asks, your anger burn and smoke against the sheep of your pasture. Wow, this English. Your anger burn. It's like Jamaican. Your anger burn. Your anger burn and smoke against the sheep of your pasture. Honestly, remember your congregation, which you have acquired of old, which you have redeemed to be the tribe of your heritage. Remember Mount Zion, where you have dwelt. Direct your feet quickly to the perpetual ruins and desolations the foe has devastated and desecrated everything in the sanctuary. In the midst of your holy place, your enemies have roared with their battle cry and they have set up their own idol emblems for signs of victory. They seem like men who lift the axes upon a thicket of trees to make themselves a record. And then all the carved wood of the holy place they broke down with hatchets and hammers. They set your sanctuary on fire. They have profaned the dwelling place of your name by casting it to the ground. They said in their hearts, let us make havoc of such places altogether. They have burned up all God's meeting houses in the land. We don't see our symbols. There is no longer any prophet it, neither does any among us know for how long. Oh God, how long is the adversary to scoff and reproach? Is the enemy to blaspheme and revile your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand, even your right hand? Draw it out of your bosom and consume them. Make an end of them. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me give us a picture here. Asaph, the writer uh, of this uh, psalm, is a uh, if you read scripture, well, Asaph is actually a seer. He is a prophet. He was a psalmist who was a prophet and he was a very uh, defining voice for Israel. And so calamity, desolation befell Israel and they attest to how the people of Israel were not only destroyed, but their places of worship were destroyed as well. Their holy places were burned. And these men seemed like as those which lifted up axes to say, uh, as if they're cutting a thicket of trees. They said, let us get rid of all these believers and everything they represent. Not only did they do that, but they also burnt the sanctuaries and profaned the dwelling places, removed every sign of the believers and created havoc in the places uh, of worship. The Bible says that they destroyed every meeting place. And you see a story of an enemy attacking Israel day by day and every day attacking more than he's attacking. And we see as though God is silent. We see as though God is not saying anything on the attack of his people. They're attacking them. And God seems silent. They're attacking them. And we don't see the hand of God coming through to rescue his people. And then, while the Bible says in verses 9, we do not see our symbols because everything has been destroyed. The artifacts of the faith are away. The next line says there's no longer any prophet. 
and none of us know how long it is. This is us of now speaking on behalf of those who are hearing God. So that means not only were they tested and tried uh, by the attacks of their enemies, I believe the Jews then started running to the men who knew God, the seers, the seekers, the prophets of that time, and ask them, why aren't these things uh, ending? Why are we continuing uh, this way? Why, are we, uh, why do we feel like we are forsaken by our God? And a man tells you the symbols were lost and we had no prophet. There was no longer any prophet. Neither did any among us know how long. Okay? Neither did any of us know how long? So you, when you say there was no prophet, the literal word there is not that there was no prophet in existence. In a, it, it only means that the prophets that were there had no answer of what was happening. So you see the lamentations of lost ordinances. There's no word. There is no revelation. Somebody's lamenting. It's one thing to go through something, but you have a word from God. It's one thing to be tried but God has told you what is happening and how you're going to come out. But they had no answer and they did not know how long. They find themselves in such confusion. Do you see? Do you see? They are in such confusion. They don't know what's going to happen next day. They don't know what attack is coming next. They don't know how long it's going to come. And later the man tells God, it's as though you've just hid your hand within. He tells him, take it out. Take it out. Draw it out of your bosom and consume these people. Why do you hold back? How long? Are we going to continue in these tests and trials? There are people in the world who are going through exactly what I'm saying. Or could go through exactly what I'm saying. Or some of us actually have ever been in a season of our life where we went through something similar. Where you seemed like you were coming out of one problem, <laughs> entering an, a worse problem. And as though that is still dealing with you, you are failing to bear what you're dealing with. And another challenge comes. And as though that is still disturbing you, another one comes. And then you have three, four, five, six issues. And they're coming in. It's as though they were sent one at a go to come follow the other. And then you find yourself in a place where you don't even know what to tell those that are watching you, those that are observing your way of life. I don't know that somebody has been in such a situation. I have in the past been in a situation like that where I came out of one issue, entering another. You come out of one issue, you enter another. You know, you go to a doctor, they find this in your body. The next day you find another thing. The next day they find another thing. We didn't check right. Then the third day they find another thing. You have like 17, you know, things or seven things or five things and you're swallowing 20, 30, 40 drugs. You were healthy once and then you go all down to zero. You see, you had a job and then you lost that job and then you got another one and then you had a loan and then when the job was over, the guy of the loan comes and then he wants to take the house and then the house was taken, the car was sold and then this and your children came out of school and your wife left. You start to see people, some people go through one issue after another until the man asked God a question. Why are you holding back? Why is your hand hidden in your bosom? How long, oh God, will this be? How much are we going to carry or suffer before we see your redemption? How long, verses 10, is the adversary to scoff and reproach? Is the enemy to blaspheme and revile your name? How long? How long? So then I ask this question. It's one thing for you to come out of one issue into another. But have you ever seen somebody or have you ever gone through a situation where not only are you entering another challenge, but are bigger and greater than the one you were in before? I ask that question importantly because I have an answer. If you have gone through it, you'll understand it. If you're going through it, you'll get an answer. If you will go through it, you will look for this someone. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. Let me give you a few examples. You watch your workplace, for example. 
You're doing your good job. Then they hire this fellow. And perhaps he's working on the same level as you are. And then he starts frustrating you. He or she becomes a problem at your workplace. And as it continues, you start praying, Oh God, come through, help me. This person has become a problem. Da, 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 da. Then a few months later, while they have this headache, you hear that they've been promoted to be your supervisor. That means if they frustrated you while you were still at the same level, what do you think is in their head when they become your what? Your supervisor. And then they take on that responsibility. And then you wake up one day and say, if I was struggling with this guy while we were still in the same position, what's going to happen? And the guy is promoted. He's favored. And then one day he or she even says something against you which is false. And everyone believes them. Everyone believes them. Have you ever gone through blackmail? Have you ever gone through a situation where a friend betrayed you? Or somebody spoke something false about you and said all these manner of lies, a thousand of them, and you can look back and you even have all that is necessary to justify yourself and give your side of the story. But you're around people who are made up never to understand you for some reason. And then the devil deceives you into thinking, now also fight for your place. Try to also tell people what your true story is. And as you go to also give your side of the story, the Holy Spirit tells you, Shh, don't say anything. Why? Keep quiet. How can I keep quiet when somebody is speaking evil about me? Uh -uh. You hold your peace. Wait on me. Then you say, okay, let me wait. And then you keep silent. When you keep silent, if they were speaking at 20%, they add to 40. Then you go to God and you're like, ah! and you say, shh. All right, I'm quiet. I'm waiting for my vindication. And as though that's not enough, as you're waiting for the vindication, your vindication for God to come through for you, you hear the guys who are actually fighting you are even starting to do better. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? You're waiting for that justification that only God is supposed to give. And then this person even worsens in how they're treating you. And, but things, their the, the life is going on even better. They're becoming richer. They're becoming healthier. Their influence is increasing. Therefore, if they were speaking to 100, now they're able to speak to 200 or 300. You see their increase before your eyes and you keep waiting for the vindication of God. It gets to one year, it becomes two years, it becomes three years, it becomes four years, and the more they speak, the more you're waiting on God to prove them wrong, but they just don't get proved wrong. They found you once serving God, and you looked filthy, dirty, you were poor, and then they pointed at you and said, this thing you call God, eh? this thing you call worshiping God, eh? That is foolish. And then they start throwing all manner of words at you and are shaming you. And then you went in a corner. Then you say, vindicate me, my father. Show them that you are true. And after making that prayer, the landlord knocks and says, get out of my house. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And the ones who abused you that week, tomorrow buy a new car. You understand what I'm saying? And so you have those questions of God. How come I, the righteous one, seeking and serving you, have been thrown out of this house and the very person who has scoffed at me now has a new car, has even built himself a new house. I'm going to wait for your vindication. One year, nothing. Two years, nothing. Three years, nothing happens to their kids. Four years, nothing happens to anything. I mean, you start looking and say, "Go, God, where is this going? How long? This, this is the state. Asaf speaks to God. This kind of situation. Where God takes so long, but as it seems that it's taking so long, circumstances start worsening on your side and perhaps better on those that oppose you or the things that are against you. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalms 92, the fifth verse, O Lord, how great are thy works and thy thoughts are very deep. And he says, a British man knoweth not, a wicked man does not know, neither does a fool understand this. 
that when the wicked springs up as the grass, eh? he's talking about a place where a man who is wicked is prospering. When the wicked spring up as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, so it's possible for a worker of iniquity to work, to flourish. The Bible says, newsflash, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. Then I saw a mystery that sometimes God can flourish them enough to give them a good fall. Did you understand what I just said? God can flourish them enough to give them a good fall. God can prosper a man enough and you think he's prospering him because he has forgotten you, but he's doing all of that to take him at a place where when the fall comes, it is so hard that that man cannot return. I also discovered through the mind of God that it is possible to have a disease and as that disease increases, or grows in your body, God is actually working most concerning your deliverance. But when you don't know the way of God, you can easily draw back to perdition and think that it seems this was come to kill me. We have seen through scripture that your enemy can exalt himself beyond what you ever imagined. But yet in the midst of that, he does not know that God has a plan to deal with him forever. Can you imagine that kind of God? That God can intend to take a man out of employment and not get him fired or demote him, but promote him until he's out. Now, that's where Christians don't understand it. They say, mm -mm, because they think the only way God can take a man out is by demoting him. No. Sometimes he can promote a man out of employment. Are you hearing me? Today he's supervisor, tomorrow he's head of that, the other day he's executive this, and then he's MD, and then something happens up there. And it flashes him and he never gets a job again. But can you trust God even when you don't understand how it is working? Somebody shout hallelujah. Do you know there's a man right now that cancer was stage four, stage one, sorry. And they prayed and he went to stage two. And they prayed and he went to stage three. And they prayed and he went to stage four. And now they've given him days and perhaps he's watching this service. And I wish I could actually tell him that God has been working from the time he got that cancer and now at stage four, he's working more than he was working at stage one. It doesn't mean that God didn't watch this process. But he is the kind of God who likes giving that answer where it seems not to come. Because sometimes it's the only way he can prove that he's God. Somebody shout hallelujah. God, God loves, he loves to prove himself true beyond reasonable doubt. Because maybe at stage one, they would say, chemotherapy worked. Maybe at stage two, they would say, radiotherapy did what? It worked. Maybe at stage three, they would say, the operation worked. And God could actually exhaust everything and you feel like you are at wit's end and the enemy has won. And just when you think it is over, you discover it was all a plan. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. So I have seen, I have seen, I've lived this life, I've studied scripture, and I'm going to give you examples in scripture, where it seems like a man has lost it. It seems like a man has come to the end of a thing. It seems like he has lost the battle. It seems like he has been rejected and betrayed by God. And just when you think it is done, God lifts a standard on that man or woman's life, and you ask yourself, God, where were you all along? And he will tell you, I know when to come in. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. I was reading Exodus recently, the fifth chapter. You remember the story when Aaron and Moses comes to Pharaoh. 
And they tell Pharaoh, let the children of Israel go that they might serve God. Now, during that time, scriptures tell us that the children of Israel, sorry, were slaves or servants to the household of Pharaoh, the Egyptians, and they were forced into manual labor, especially building with bricks. But they used to build with bricks and straw. Right? When Moses comes with Aaron to Pharaoh, and, he tell, and they tell Pharaoh that release the people of God that they might go and worship their God, Pharaoh turns to Moses and Aaron and tells them, you're trying to make these people lazy. Can you imagine? You, you, you want me to release these people so they become lazy. L look at how this man is thinking. They've been in hard labor and he's saying, no, you're just making them lazy. And if you read the verses later, Pharaoh says, now from today, as Aaron and Moses have come to ask for your release, I realize that by the time you can ask time to worship, it means you don't have anything to do. From today, you're going to look for your own straw and put it in the what? In the bricks you're making. And I want you to be producing the same amount of bricks you've been producing every day. Now, I imagine the Jew who was building brick with straw, they used to give them straw to build. And then that day Pharaoh says that we don't, now you're going to be looking for your own straw. You go out, look for straw, put it in the bricks. If you, as an individual, has been making probably four or 2,000 bricks a day, we expect you to still make 2,000 bricks a day. It seems you're lazy. Think what the, this Jew is thinking about Moses. What, what has Moses brought us? And then a time comes when the men of God continue to complain to Pharaoh. Pharaoh says, now, I have now changed my mind. From today, you're not going to build with straw. You're going to build bricks without straw, which is a long and harder process. And he still insists, and by the way, you're going to still give me the same volume you've been producing every day. I imagine an old man who calls Moses on the side and asks him, boss, why did you come? Why? He's in the middle of God's perfect will for the deliverance of the children of Israel. But at that point, it doesn't seem like it makes sense because he has made their labor worse. I see the old people saying, if it is God who sent him, mm -mm. No, let's follow. You, you, you follow me. If it is God who sent him, wouldn't this have been easier? You know, I have those Christians who have a very myopic thinking about how God works. If God was in this thing, it would be easy. Oh, Jesus would just have walked through the earth and gone to heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah, glory to God. If God was in this, oh, sometimes God can be in the hardest Yet he is in that. Somebody shout hallelujah. And I've seen the devil sail through easy flows. I've seen it. I've seen Satan walk through the easiest. Provide a man with a plane ticket to the wrong destination because he wants to kill him there. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. So you don't judge God by how it comes. Truth is deeper than, than, than circumstances. Somebody shout hallelujah. So I see this man telling Moses and Aaron, whatever your God told you, we might not understand, but it has worsened from the time you came. I imagine some people might have sat on the side and said, why don't you tell Aaron and Moses to go back and just leave us alone? So we be. There are many believers who get to that spot and reject God's way. Because they're blind on how he works. But the scriptures have said that this man only springs up and flourishes that he might be destroyed forever. It's in the story of Moses that we see that God had a bigger plan than what Pharaoh would imagine. Pharaoh did not know what was coming. He did not have a clue what he was playing with. He didn't have a clue. Somebody shout hallelujah. But Moses, persuaded by the God who met him in the wilderness, he knew that this was going to end some way. He knew it was going to come to an end and he saw that one day the children of Israel would walk out 
of Egypt against Pharaoh's wish, but he would have nothing to do because that's what makes God, God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. Put yourself in, you, in the shoes of Joseph. God appears to you and gives you a dream and says, this is what you're going to be. And then he pronounces a great destiny in your life. And from the onset of that blessing, somebody starts to hate you. You've never done anything. <laughs> You've never done anything to them. He's betrayed by his brothers. He's thrown in the pit. He comes out. He goes in Potiphar's house. And then from there, he meets his wife. And the wife accuses him falsely. He's put in prison. You see a story of a man going worse to worse to worse to worse to worse. Yet God is in the midst of that story. He's hidden somewhere. He's hidden somewhere. He's hidden somewhere. Somebody shout hallelujah. God can be hidden in the worst circumstance of your life. And you perhaps you could even miss him. Because you'd not assume that he can be there. This, this is what he's telling us. But we have seen the end of Joseph to understand how God works. Uh-uh. Jesus comes and says, Lazarus' sickness shall not end in death. You've all read that. Oh, your brother, your friend Lazarus is sick. Uh-uh. That guy's sickness shall not end in what? In death. And the scriptures tell us, <laughs> Lazarus died. From bad to worse. Lazarus died. I'm going somewhere. I'm still on the surface. But I need to make sure that I don't leave anyone where we're going. Lazarus' sickness shall not end in what? In death. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. And the man dies. The man dies. But we see the infinite plan of God on that man's destiny. That Jesus is not a liar because the man died. It didn't make Jesus a liar. It didn't, it didn't make God a liar because Lazarus died. It didn't make God a liar because Lazarus died. It didn't make God a liar because you proclaim that your marriage will not fail and the man left. It doesn't make God slap somebody. It doesn't make God a liar. Neither does it prove that God wasn't in it. Otherwise, where Lazarus was, when Lazarus had died and Jesus had said, I imagine there was a group of weak heads at that point who said, if he said, mm -mm, mm -mm. let's first examine this. Let's, guys, think, come on, use some logic and reasoning, okay? Just use your brains, okay? Don't just be, you know, lose your, use your brains. The guy said, the luck, weren't you there? How's that? What did he say? And then I see these ones who are defending him in ignorance also. No, but he will heal him. You, no, 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 but, but maybe that's not what he said. You know, there are people who actually defend God in ignorance. Eh? They're just emotionally attached to, to, to a love, but without the revelation of his person. And many misrepresent even with their well intention. Right? So, you, there's this guy saying, no, 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 let's, let's reason this. The guy said, but the guy's sickness shall not in what? In death. And then I'm seeing this other brother saying, no, 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 no. That's not what he said. I think you heard badly. Or maybe that's not what he implied. Or somebody might even get a sort of plastic cover like. He means even in heaven, eh? he shall live. That's exactly what was in the head of Martha. That was exactly, many, some Christians think like that. Maybe this didn't work because this is what he meant. <laughs> you understand? But Jesus meant what he said. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus meant what he said. He meant it. And so the man dies. And Jesus still meant it. And I know many men at that funeral who would have changed the message too. You see, much as we said that Lazarus' sickness would not end in death, he's not dead. He's with the Father. And they will be right, but not true. 
God is looking for crazy believers here. He's not looking for people who are able to compromise because they have failed to find reason for the failure of their faith. God wants to take you to a point where you will say he shall not die. If he dares to die, you're going to walk to that tomb. You're going to walk into that mortuary and say God is still here. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. God. Now, let me talk about that faith. Now we are delving deep into a more mature conversation. I have realized that when we go through challenges, especially coming out of one thing or one issue and we are in its worsening or we're getting into a uh, situations harder than the ones we're coming out of and we're praying and seeking God, we have a tendency either of settling with the least pain we can live with, making sense with the easiest solution that's available because it makes sense, and most times drawing back totally to perdition because we assume if God was to come, he should have already appeared. You believe with somebody and they have a disease and it progresses and you believe and it progresses and you believe. And when they get to the last minute, you hear him tap you and he says, let me go. Let me go. God wants to build your mind. To totally be yielded and agreeable with his purposes. That when you are not ready to die. <laughs> brother. Even when you die, you'll still fight yourself back. That's what I'm trying to talk about here. Are you hearing me? He wants to build a kind of Christian. Who does not give up because things are worsening? He wants to build enough tenacity in your spirit to become stronger when things become worse. To believe God when things become worse. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. I have been in situations where I've prayed for somebody and they wasn't. And then your heart tells you, no, I feel this can happen. And then you keep praying. And then they worsen. And then you keep praying. And they worsen. And then you keep praying. And at the, the moment you didn't even expect it to come that quick. Tomorrow they wake up and they are re relieved and free. And they, they are a different person. And you cannot believe what happened in the last 24 years. I'm sorry, hours or 24 days. Sometimes it's not that last prayer. It was the collection of steps that you expressed before God that I still believe. I still believe. There's a young man uh, who brought me his mother. She had stage two cancer. It went to stage three cervical went to stage four and she healed at stage four. Who am I talking to? Who told you that because it is worsening, God is out? Who told you that because things are frustrating more than they were today, God has come out? Uh -uh. Sometimes he is actually more with you when it's trying most than when you first began, you just don't have a clue and how much is on your side. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to provoke somebody to change their mind from the thought that when things are worsening, therefore either God is either not working or his mind has been revealed for you to fail. No. If his word says by his stripes you are healed, brother, if you're ready to go, you go. But if you're not ready, put up a fight. Run crazy. Start throwing things around. Are you hearing me? Break the table if you have to. And tell the devil here you're not 
taking me now I'm not yet married I don't have children I've not seen this when I was praying I told God that I must see this therefore because of this I don't care what the doctors have said I'm not ready to die yet yeah that's a fighter and God is saying it's only exalting itself that it will go forever it's only frustrating you that he will kill it once and for all he has allowed it to express itself in whichever dimension it can says that when it is done he will come through and do what must be done point is I still that's all I've seen people who left salvation very quickly. Oh, I went to pray and I wanted a husband. Now, apostle, I've sold God. Name him in Christ. I've sold God and I prayed and I did all of this, but I've not seen God coming through. And what happened? I decided to go back in the world and I'm like, how is it? No, at least I'd rather die there. What? God is immaturity. You never understood God nor his ways. A man loses all his children. Oh! I've seen somebody run mad because they lost one child. He lost all his children. Lost all his wealth. God afflicted on his body. And the Bible says, and in all this, Job never judged God foolishly. He would still raise his hands up and say, to God be the glory. Then you meet a guy who says, oh, my mother died and I left salvation. Why would she die? Oh, 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 what? You, so you left God. Let me tell you, for some of us, it would take, it would take so much because we're too dead. They will just die no. We are believers. We are believers. Are you hearing me? We've gone through things we'll never tell anyone. Because when you think that I have to narrate this, they might put me under a wrong order. Have you ever gone through something? Like if I say this, they'll not give me a job. And you say, if I say this, They'll take me to hospital tomorrow. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> and then you walk and toil with your thing and say, Kabora, diga bo, gadega, setalaka. Are you hearing me? Adi kobara de goza. It frustrates you, frustrate it. Are you hearing me? It shows you a mean face, you become meaner. It hardens its face, you become metal, iron, or cement. And you say, hey! Not now. Somebody shout hallelujah. And then you start to see your life adjusting and agreeing with you. And then you start to defy every odd. I told people. Years ago I entered the doctor's room and the doctor told me, we're not taking you out of here. We're going to have to, to admit you immediately. Your body, you, you could fall dead now. I said, what? He said, no, that's not my story. Tulibalalunyu. Sorry for those of you who don't know English. We are crazier than the devil thinks. I just said I don't fall sick. I refused it. And I refused it. And I refused it. And my body just agreed. I just woke up one day. And whatever was pain was no longer there. And I checked myself and I said, I'd even forgotten that I'd been sick. Why? Because that's just how much exercised my conscience is. Let me tell you, anybody who believes and you hear they died before they were ready, they didn't really believe. They were not crazy enough. They were not crazy enough. Are you hearing me? Lock yourself up in the room and say, mm -mm. Kare bado, reda, herikado. Don't ask God how long. Uh -uh. Don't ask God, will you? Uh, why don't you work? He's working. He's working. He's working. He's working. 
Bible says up to now the Father still works. That's what the Bible says. Don't think that things are stalled because you're not seeing any positive results. Uh-uh. Oh, I believe God, but I'm still believing God for rent. Apostle, me, I've been in this thing for long. I was here, but can you imagine? I don't even have a property of my own. So what? What does God need to make you? Nothing. You can wake up a million dollars rich tomorrow morning. You can wake up two million dollars rich tomorrow. You can wake up a billion dollars rich tomorrow morning. Not by power, not by mind. Now I know there are some guys who say, now look at this kind of guy. Yeah, he's telling people that tomorrow they can just wake up with. Yes. Switch to another channel. Yes. Houses you did not build. Yes. Vineyards you never planted. Yes my God shall do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which you dare to ask or think. When a man can't think it, that's where God begins to work. When a man can't calculate it, that's the beginning of God's miracle. When a man has no math or science for it, that's where God creates his own science and math for it. Man is crazy. The guy we serve was dead. He's working with 5,000 people and they don't have food and he's not worried. For you are worried of rent. 5,000 men. Then he says, these guys have not eaten anything. What do you have? He says, two fish. Loaves of bread. He says, bring and I show you what this is called. I want to show you what this is called. Then he raises these things up. By the time he puts the baskets down, everyone is eating and he tells them it's called power. Some of you are entering places where God is going to do things through you. I am not praying that God will come up for you and get you out of that rent issue. I'm praying that God will do something that is going to heal the long time you've waited. That is going to make your wait worth it. Hey! That is going to make your weight worth it. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That people start even admiring how you waited. They'll write books and notes. <laughs> They're going to write books and notes. They'll even admire that it came at your time. Because God knows how to make all things beautiful in their own timing. He, he doesn't need to beautify it the way you think. He can actually beautify it in his own version and make it more beautiful. That those, that those who had it first will actually admire that they had it late as you. Because it made more sense when it came in your time. Slap somebody. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes. Somebody will look at you at 40 and say, I wish I got married at 40. I, oh! somebody will see you at 60 and say I wish I did this why because God has the power to make it beautiful so what if it is worsening so what if things are not yet working so what if they don't understand it yet so what if you've not broken through yet listen 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 it is expanding so it can explode well. Who has understood it? <laughs> oh, they are promoting it so they can show it out. That kind of God. That is why sometimes I look at one time somebody years ago frustrated me and said very evil things about me and I went to God Father when will you come through to vindicate your righteous nothing Holy Spirit I'm waiting nothing God how will you do this He's even said this. He's even said that. Now you see. He's even, oh, even it's worse. He's even gone here. Is it? You understand? And then he does all these things. 
And then one day, the last time I prayed about it, you know what happened? The last time I ever mentioned it, I was praying and God made a statement in his head. Son, I see what he's doing to you and I can stop him. But I want to make sure that he does all he can do. Such that when I come for him on your behalf, I'll also do all I have to do. Who has understood it? Sometimes God wants to let it all out. It says that everybody will know. It says that when the enemy is done, God says, now let me come out too. Some of you, God is saying, no, leave it. It shouldn't burst prematurely. Uh, 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 don't spoil it. Wait a bit. Let him finish. When he's done, I'll come too and show you how it works. I'll show you power. And I remember that day when I was in praying. It was one of those weekdays I was alone praying. And the Holy Spirit told me, instruct your CFO to buy more chairs. I'm about to do something. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you hearing me? And then we bought chairs. And they were filled in two meetings. He told me, buy more. And we bought more and they were filled. He told me, buy more. He wanted to destroy you. Buy more. We filled more chairs. It says, buy more. And they filled too. Oh God, I'm overwhelmed, Grace. Buy more. Buy. 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 Up to today. I still hear him telling me, buy <laughs> more. Some of you, God wants to come through and do something on your life that is going to put an indelible mark on anything that ever opposed you. That when it looks at you, it will tell the rest, don't touch. Pharaoh did not know that as he kept taunting these guys, tomorrow they were going to walk places no Egyptian can walk. Yes, they are slaves, but they are going to walk through water. And an Egyptian will assail to do and sink. He didn't know that the people he was enslaving had a certain covenant that would, the Bible says, by faith. <laughs> they walked through the sea as of dry land, which the Egyptians assailed to do, and they were drowned. God is going to take you a place where your enemy can't swim. He's going to take you, I'm prophesying now. Some of you, he's going to kill you. That HIV won't be able to live in your body. <laughs> it will, you, you will die and live. Oh, who understood what I just said? If they said that a virus can't live eh, when a person is dead, God will kill you and raise you himself if he has to. Sometimes he does it that way. If he can't take it out, he can kill you and it goes out and raise you up. God is not limited to your thinking. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. Psalm 37 verse 35, he says, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he shall pass away. And lo, he was not. He says, I sought him, but I could not find him. God, a man once was so inflated with power. And the Bible says he spread like leaves, a green bay tree. And then God did something. 
And one day, this man went back to look for the enemy. He couldn't even find him. That's how some of these things are going to be for some of you. Can I prophesy a bit? That they are going to look for the sign that you ever suffered from that disease and they won't find it. They are going to look for... If some of you think rumors can't go. Listen. Any false rumors on your life can disappear. And one day, if it means God killing everyone who had it or making them forget it, he can. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. But he says, I sought him and I could not see him anymore. God can vindicate you to a place where you will look for your accuser and you won't find one. Even those who, who disagreed with you start agreeing with you. They'll start agreeing with you. Somebody shout amen. amen. Shout glory to God. So God wants to build an army. I want to pray with you. But as I finish, God wants to build an army of people who are not intimidated by calamity. Who are not intimidated by talk. Who are not intimidated by gossip and slander. Who are not intimidated by sickness. Who are not intimidated by the troubles of this life. Even when you don't have an answer, God still has an answer. Even when you don't have a prophet that can speak in your circumstances, God is still there. God wants to raise a people who know who they are. He wants you to get to a point that if you were to lose it all and went back to nothing, you'd still know the way of rebuilding it again. That kind of man can't die. Because he can still find God. She can still find God. Somebody shout hallelujah. COVID has damaged many things. But let me tell you, Satan has not seen anything yet. He's going to see the church. That is why when people sit in conversations, ah, for me, COVID was this, I don't, I don't, I don't add. I don't add a negative talk because I know what COVID has done for me. For me, it has worked. And somebody can say, hey, look at this guy. People died. What? <laughs> Listen, I sympathize with the dead, but I'm speaking for me. That when there's a casting down, he says, you shall say, there's a lifting up. Christians, stop conversations. Certain conversations. Stop. Don't be phoned. You know, COVID season? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. What it has done to us. You who? For me, when COVID began, I said, Father, I'm not subject to COVID. I'm not subject to its influence and power over the earth. This is the season we're going to grow. This is the season we're going to make wealth. This is the season we're going to be healthy. This is the season our star is going to shine. And that mentality, that mentality, enough was to do it all. Why? Because... I have understood how God works. Now, I have good news for those of you who either have been dealing with issues that have long stayed. How long, God? Your hand is... Your hand... No, no, listen. Today we're going to make a prayer that is deliberate on long-term issues. And the Lord told me that for some of you, it ends today. I don't know who... <laughs> Somebody might go in it longer tomorrow. It's up to them. But I, I came with a word and the Lord told me today you're going to pray with somebody. And those long things are ending today. Those long rejections are ending today. Those long frustrations are ending today. That struggle and strife is ending today. 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 And it only became bigger so it would end and have the biggest fall it should have. Some of you, God had to wait it out such that when it falls, it shouldn't return. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Get to your feet, we're going to pray. Those of you at home, those of you are in the studio, I want you to raise your voice and let us pray. 
build your spirit tonight according to the word that you have heard huh? build your spirit tonight according to the word that you have heard build your spirit tonight according to the word that you have heard if you don't need it now you're going to need it someday but it better find you ready it better find you ready this instruction comes to strengthen you to build a certain tenacity this instruction comes to give you a certain strength Come and raise your voice. We still believe. We still believe. I still believe. The Bible says that the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Venero, make manifest.